Hello student, uh, welcome to the course of uh, electrical power distribution and utilization. In our last lecture we have studied about uh, the underground cables uh, and its construction. Today we are uh, going to study the cable for three phase services and then uh, how we line off underground cable in uh, an example related to underground cable. So cable for three phase service. In uh, practice or for distribution purposes underground cable are generally required to deliver three phase power. For uh, this purpose either three core cable or three single core cable may be used. Like uh, for transmission purposes we use a three phase system. So for voltage up to 66 kV three core cable that is multi-core construction is preferred due to economic reason however for voltage beyond 66 kV uh, three core cable become too large and therefore single core cable are used as we know that uh, cable are made up of, of many uh, uh, it has conductor, it has sheet, it has screen, it has uh, insulations and all these things make a, a cable in expensive. So that's why for a voltage beyond 66 kV, three core cable become too large and therefore single core cable are used. We have the, the following types of cable are generally used for three phase services that is uh, types of cable used for three phase system belted cable uh, the voltage is up to 11 kV and then screen cable from 22 kV to 66 kV and pressure cable beyond 66 kV these are the name used for the underground cable and its voltage really Cable for three phase service, uh, the reliability of underground cable network depends to a considerable extent upon the proper lying and attachment of fitting uh, like cable in boxes, joint, branch, connector, etc. There are three man methods of lying underground cables, so how it will be reliable underground cable so it's all depend upon the proper line in the fittings and cable box joints etc as these are underground system so we have three main methods for underground cable line that is the Doric line this method of lying underground cable is simple and cheap and is much favored in modern practice. In this method, uh, a trench of about 1.5 meter deep and 45 centimeter wide is dug. The trench is covered with a layer of uh, fine sand of about 10 centimeter thickness and the cable is laid over this sand bed. The sand prevents the entry of moisture from the ground and thus protects the cable from decay. After the cable has been laid in the trench, it is covered with another layer of sand of about 10 cm thickness. So this is the method of direct line. We have a trench of about 1.5 mm deep 
and 45 centimeter wide and then this trench is covered with a layer of fine sand and cable is laid over this bed then uh, the sand is used to prevent the uh, entry of moisturizer from the ground and thus protect the cable from decaying um, also there is another layer of uh, sand of about 10 centimeter thickness then this trench uh, is covered with bricks and other material in order to protect the cable from mechanical injury when more than one cable is to be laid in the same trench a horizontal or vertical spacing of at least uh, 30 centimeters is provided in order to reduce the effect of mutual heating and also to ensure that a fault occurring on one cable does not damage the adjacent cable so when uh, we are using more than one cable a uh, uh, horizontal or uh, vertical spacing is provided in order to reduce the effect of heating and the fault occurring on one cable does not damage the adjacent cable this is the direct line matter we have a trunch a sand bed there is a cable and a concrete cover or bricks to prevent the mechanical injuries and this is the drawn in system we have a concrete covering and these are the ducts drawn drawn in system uh, in this method conduit or duct of a uh, glaze stone or cast iron or concrete are uh, led uh, in the ground with the main hole at a suitable position along the cable route so in this way we make a uh, concrete or cast iron or a duct of or conduit of stone in the ground and main hole at a suitable position along the cable route. The cable are then pulled into the position from main holes. Three of the ducts carry transmission cable and the four duct carry relay protection connection. Pilot wire care must be taken that where the duct line change directions. So through the main hole the mm, cable are then pulled and three of the ducts carry the transmission cable and the four ducts carry the relay protection pilot wire. So this is the drawn in system. Depths, dips and offset be made with a very long radius or it will be difficult to pull a large cable between the main holes. So depths and offset be made at a very long radius in order to prevent the mechanical injury as well as the it is difficult to fold a large cable between the main hole. The distance between the main hole should not be too long so as to simplify the pulling in of the cable. The cable to be led in this way need uh, be armed but must be provided with a serving of Asian and Jewish in order to prevent them when being pulled into the ducts. The next, uh, the last one is the solid system. In this matter of blowing the cable is led in open pipes or through duct out in arc along the cable route. Trophing is uh, of cast iron, stone, wall or treated wood, etc. After the cable is laid in position, the troughing is filled with a bituminous compound and cover over.
cable led in this manner are usually plain lead cover because through it afford good mechanical protection. Here we have uh, an example related to cable. A single core cable has a conductor diameter of 1 cm and insulation thickness of 0.4 cm. At the specific resistance of the insulation is 5 multiplied by 10 power 14 ohm centimeter we need to calculate the insulation resistance for a 2 km length of the cable so conductor radius r1 that is 1 centimeter so divide by 2 diameter is given and we know that uh, diameter is equal to 1 by 2 of radius so R1 is equal to 1 divided by 2.5 cm radius. We divide the diameter into two parts, so we got the conductor radius. And length of a cable is given that is the 2 km. Two km length of the cable. And we change it into meter. One kilometer have thousand meters so two kilometer have two thousand meter and the resistivity rho five into ten to the power fourteen ohm centimeter is equal to five multiplied by ten to the power twelve ohm meter change it into meter because we are dealing in meters then we have internal sheet radius of uh, 0 0.5 plus 0.4 that is equal to 0.9 Centimeters. This is the conductor radius and internal sheet radius is uh, insulation thickness is 0.4 cm so 0.4 cm and 0.5 cm we got 0.9 cm of internal sheet radius. resistance of cable is uh, R, this is the formula, rho divided by 2 phi L, log E R2 by R1. So the value of uh, rho is 5 into 10 to the power 12, this one, and divided by 2 phi length, 200 meter, log and 0.9, the internal sheet radius 0.9 divided by the R1 conductor radius so this is equal to 234 mega ohm so the insulation resistance for 2 km length of a diameter 1 cm and insulation thickness of 0.4 cm and its specific resistance of insulation is this is equal to 34 mega ohm thank you